Hello everybody and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview on these two outdoor client bridges slash access points and they're from Ingenious, model numbers ENS500 and ENS200EXT. So before we get too much further, I actually want to show you a list of all the different versions of what Ingenious is currently using for their business solutions in terms of outdoor APs and client bridges. So take a look at this graphic with me. Uh, across the board you can see there's tons of features and many different options. So we've got six different versions. We're going to primarily focus on the two in this particular vi video, but you can take a look at the graphic and see for yourself which might work better for the solution you're looking to uh, solve, I guess, for the solution you need to have. Uh, the ENS 200 EXT, uh, it's wireless and clearly so is the ENS 500. Uh, the ENS 500 is uh, 802.11a and n, but jumping down to memory, you're looking at 32 megabytes of memory that's built into the 200 EXT versus 64 megabytes for the ENS 500. Uh, then they double it again for flash memory, 8 versus 16. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz range uh, for the EXT and for the ENS 500 you're looking at 5 gigahertz band. So between the two of them, 150 megabits per second transfer rate uh, versus 300 megabits per, per second uh, maximum theoretical throughput, I should say, not transfer rate. Jumping down to RF power, they're both the same at 400 milliwatts. Uh, that's going to be great for any kind of long distance in terms of transmission power. And you drop down to the LAN interface, they're both using 10 uh, Ethernet ports, two of them in fact. Antennas, uh, you're looking at the one exterior antenna that's 5 uh, dBi omnidirectional for the ENS200. Uh, we'll talk about uh, use case for that later. As well as the ENS500 looking at two built-in uh, 10 dBi directional. It's actually specifically for directional. So we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. And they're internal. In fact, I think two built-in, what they're really saying is that uh, it's a single antenna that's using uh, a different way to approach the transmission of that. But moving right along, because the ENS200 is, has an external extension, it also uses a connector type, the SMA type. So this way, if you wanted to replace that antenna and possibly hook it up with a directional one to give it just a single direction to transmit and receive from, or a more powerful omnidirectional antenna, you have that option with the ENS200. Dropping down to the IP rating, they both have uh, an ingress protection rating of 65, which is going to be great for external use uh, to be mounted on the side of a building or a household. We'll go into deeper, uh, we'll go into that a little bit later about how deep that actually can protect your, your system. Uh, primary applications, they're talking about uh, uh, point to two multipoint versus building to building. And we'll actually get into this a little bit further. So I should jump right into the very first one I want to talk about, which is the ENS 200 EXT. Just a couple things on the box I wanted to mention. And in fact, they're not on the front, uh, they are here on the side. So we've got some technical specifications. I'm probably going, I've already gone over most of these actually, but uh, this is in case I've missed anything else. You can, you can pick it up right here. Uh, one thing I do like about it is the web configuration. They call it the Easy Controller software. It's free download directly from Ingenius's website. Uh, I might, if I have time, go over that with you guys just to show you what it looks like because it looked pretty interesting to me. Aside from that, I'm going to flip around to the back and show you one or two final things. Uh, most important is just that it has a proprietary PoE uh, uh, injector. So something like that being that it's proprietary as opposed to being uh, certified may affect your deployments. So keep that in mind that this will work with the said AP that's in this box, but otherwise you might run into some other issues, maybe via distance or connecting multiple devices to it. Something to keep in mind. So let me go ahead and pull this back and we'll start looking at the stuff that came inside the box. Uh, first and foremost, I have our paperwork here and they do provide for you worldwide technical support and Ingenious is giving you all the contact information for that. A nice quick start guide in multiple languages, although they do say here at the bottom of the pamphlet that you can refer to the user manual itself and download it directly from IngeniousNetwork.com uh, for more information as well as a QR code to give you a quick and dirty way of getting in there. Uh, other things they provided in the box, uh, some, uh, some zip ties here so you can attach this to maybe a telephone pole or, or a light post somewhere uh, near your business that you need to set up maybe an IP camera and this as an AP for it. 
Then we have some mounting screws. And along with those mounting screws, uh, we also have a nice little template here. And it's adhesive, so you could stick it to wherever you need to post this up, maybe on the side of a building or, or something like that. Then we're also getting, or we also receive inside the box, uh, an AC adapter. Here's that PoE injector that I mentioned earlier. LAN on one side, uh, then power in, and then the PoE on, comes out the other side. So that's where you're going to get the power over, over Ethernet uh, coming out to, to your devices, or in this case, your device, which is right here. This is the ENS uh, 200EXT. Here's the antenna that I have yet to attach to it. Uh, but let me flip that around to the front so I can show you. That's the SMA port that you can plug it into. Uh, otherwise, you could actually provide a different antenna, let's say, if you wanted to use something different, as opposed to this uh, omnidirectional one that they provided. Uh, looking at the back here, you can see some mounting points here for the uh, bracket to be, or the screws to be uh, screwed into. And it just, you know, slide the screws right inside and then uh, pop it down or up, depending on which direction you mount this. Uh, uh, this device. So looking down here, we also have a bit of tiny bit of information. You actually don't need to look too closely, but basically provides your MAC address and serial number and the hardware version that uh, this is, as well as some LEDs, power, uh, LAN connectivity, uh, wireless LAN connectivity, and signal strength. So let me just go ahead and remove this cover, and I'll show you guys the inside where it's nice and protected. Uh, this is the two Ethernet ports that we mentioned before, 10-100 ports, uh, LAN on this side and LAN PoE on this side. We also have a reset button right next to them, uh, that small little hole there where you could fit in something to reset this device in case you need to, back to its defaults. Flip it back around again and just talk a little bit more about uh, the device itself. So it is wireless 2.4 gigahertz N150, and that means it's a maximum theoretical speed of, or theoretical throughput of 150 megabits per second. It does have an ingress protection rating of IP65, which basically just means that it's dust tight, and that it's been tested with water jets to make sure that the enclosure uh, doesn't have any ingress of water or particulates inside the, the chassis here, inside of this casing. Operating temperature range, you're looking at negative 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. Celsius and Fahrenheit, that's negative 4 degrees all the way up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, humidity, non-condensing, we're looking at anywhere between 0% all the way up to 90% typical. So essentially, this is safe for outdoor deployment. Use case scenarios for this device, you're looking at something like uh, basically an exterior mounted Wi-Fi connection point for multiple users to access. Um, it's maybe uh, perhaps a, ded a dedicated Wi-Fi connection while you work outside in your yard or where you stream music by the pool, something like that. Um, obviously, in terms of a business, you might want to use this, uh, in fact, uh, Ingenious recommends it to use it for an outdoor IP camera and set this up in AP mode. Uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, Ingenious EZ controller software for Windows, Mac, and Linux. But let's move on to the next AP. Moving right along to the ENS 500, I just wanted to show you guys the technical specs on the side of this box as well. So you can take a close look at that. Uh, besides that, I know that we have a couple more things to talk about in this box, and most of them are pretty much the same, uh, aside from this one being 300 megabits per second a connection speed as opposed to the 150, which was the last one, as an internal directional 10 dBi high gain antenna. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up the box and show you more of what's inside this. All right, so first and foremost, the paperwork. Once again, they're providing that technical information worldwide. Uh, as well as that quick start guide and the ability to download the full user guide should you need more support on the installation of this product. Uh, for mounting, they're providing for you uh, these nice little bands that you'll be able to zip tie around whatever it is you're going to attach it to. Same thing again with screws and anchors, uh, as well as providing you with this very nice sticker that you'll be able to attach to a whatever it is that you're going to attach the device to and give you a nice little printout of where you need to screw things in. Uh, PoE injector, I forgot to mention before the voltage on this, by the way. It is proprietary, as we said, uh, just the same as the other one on the side of the box. Uh, the, the PoE side is here, the LAN side is here, DC in power goes in here. On the back side, uh, it's going to take uh, 12 volt and pump it up to, actually it's between 12 and 24 volt uh, PoE injector. So keep that in mind. Speaking of power, moving along to the AC adapter, obviously going to supply power for either the PoE injector or the actual device itself. 
Uh, in fact, this particular case, that's the only way to get power to this device. I almost forgot what I was talking about, which is APs and uh, bridges, and these are outdoors. So they really don't want to have too many different connectors going into this device, so they're really using the PoE to provide a, a more secure location to get everything in, because the more, the more holes you have in the chassis, the more opportunities for water and dust to get inside. So that being said, the ENS500 looks very similar to the, the prior version, the ENS200 e, uh, EXT. And if you notice here, the exact same layout, exact same format of everything in terms of mounting, in terms of the location of the sticker and the LEDs, power LAN, wireless LAN, as well as wireless strength as well. I'm going to go ahead and pop off the lid here so you can take a closer look at the inside. Just as the other one was designed, uh, you have the LAN over here and LAN PoE goes in here. Uh, this clearly the other LAN would be if you were going to connect a device to it. Uh, and this would obviously latch on with little holes at the bottom for the wires to come out. Now, a couple more things I wanted to say about the device. They actually both have a one year warranty and I forgot to mention that on the, uh, the prior version. Uh, also, it does have an integrated dual polarity internal 10 dBi directional MIMO antenna, which is giving it uh, wireless 5 gigahertz speeds of 300 megabits per second, maximum, maximum theoretical speed of 300 megabits per second, I should say. The exact same ingress rating of 65 as the ENS 200 EXT, protecting it from harsh outdoor weather, uh, which is obviously where it's intended to be deployed. Same operating temperature range and humidity. Keep in mind though, the ENS 500 uses a directional antenna, so it's great low bandwidth, it's a great low bandwidth solution for connecting maybe your two office buildings together. Obviously you're gonna need to purchase another one of these in order to do that. Uh, but it also would not be so great at connecting multiple mobile uh, clients to the network. So unless they all stand in an exactly straight line, uh, you're not gonna be able to use this to connect connect multiple uh, devices to it and multiple clients. What you will be able to do is connect it uh, via two buildings and just set them up to talk to one another, uh, something to keep in mind. Also, uh, it's another great use for it is that since it uses 5 gigahertz range, you can also set this up as an AP for an outdoor IP camera where maybe the 2.4 gigahertz range is highly congested. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and move forward uh, to the Ingenious Easy controller software. All right, so here we are at IngeniousTech.com, and this is Easy Controller, which is the software that basically allows IT pros to set up their access points. Um, it's basically management software, and you can see there's a couple of different options of how you can set it up. You can actually, you know, draw a basic room and outline to kind of give you an idea of where items are. You can also set up the uh, appropriate distances and essentially map your network and how well it's being covered. Um, or actually how it's intended to be covered, I should say, because it, these are basic radiuses without including the what type of pro, uh, what type of materials or walls that it has to transmit through. So this is just something to help you design your your network, and this is great. So it's free; you can download it. Uh, minimum basic requirements that you're going to need: Windows XP, SP3. Hopefully, you're not using XP. Vista, SP1 and 2. Uh, SP1 for Windows 7, Windows 8 as well as Pentium, a, bas a basic system with Pentium dual core, 3.2 gigahertz, two gigabytes of RAM, 400 megabytes of, HD, of hard drive space. Um, then the Mac, uh, Mac OS 10.6, 0.7, 0 0.8, or 0 0.9, uh, a basic Intel x86 processor, two gigs of RAM, 400 megabytes of storage. And then Linux, if you have Ubuntu 11.04, it's gonna operate on that. Pentium dual core, 3.2 gigahertz processor, two gigabytes of RAM, and, and, and the same uh, 400 megabytes of space is going to be needed. It even tells you here uh, which ingenious products that it actually supports um, and, and firmware is inclusive. So I've gone ahead and installed the software here and kind of I've set it up a little bit. It's consistently scanning for other things on a network. I set them up to basically go through uh, as APs right now and use DHCP to get IP addresses from our, our main router. So it, that's why it's identifying it via IP. I'm connecting in a network and I'm seeing that this is .6.183 and this one's uh, .6.161 and I've named them to be exactly the same as their model names. Uh, so I can click details, it gives me a bit of information about each one of them, which country I set it up for, its uptime and number of users that are currently connected to it. Uh, coverage area, I can't zoom out any further than this, but you can see, depending on where I move it, uh, you can see the types of coverage you're going to see here um, based on each one of the two products. Uh, and then you can have overlapping if you wanted to, uh, to really get a really tough area to be covered. 
Scaling, here's where I can actually set the scaling up on the map. I pick uh, a line between two points, and then I tell it what specific scale that is. So I'm just saying it's 10 meters right now or 30 feet. Um, that's, that's basically giving me this map scale. Then, of course, there's a legend as well. It's going to describe each one of the different devices that are currently on the network and give it a different colored uh, pin for that. And obviously, these are both in AP mode, so it's just recognizing that as a light blue AP or bridge. Uh, moving right along, I can actually jump into statistics, talk about uh, upload and download, as well as what the clients are doing um, and the specific IP addresses on the network for different devices. Ignore the dot one, uh, dot one, dot one. That's actually the initial. Uh, default IP address that it starts with, and then I set it up for DHCP and it actually identified it here. Um, and then moving along, I'm going to go to devices. It shows the different devices that are currently connected to it. I didn't realize we had an ENS uh, 500. Oh no, this is just because, like before, like I was saying before, it had one that it saved uh, on the network right now. Uh, moving right along, different users, which there aren't any, and a specific log. Almost forgot to show you that you can actually admin each one of these devices. Let me just double click on it real quick. So you can look at the specific properties of uh, each device, its radio and current settings and users directly from here, as well as configuring the AP. It popped up on the other window. Sorry, guys. Um, so I can actually reconfigure it here, uh, wireless settings and the like, as well as its coverage. I'm going to move that over here again. Uh, due to cable loss here and also antenna gain. So just FYI that you can actually do some adjustments directly to each one of the devices of the APs that you have connected to the network uh, directly through the Ingenious EZ controller software. Okay, everybody, that's going to wrap up this overview of the two APs slash client bridges from Ingenious. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels. And we'll see you guys very soon.